there's a ton of excitement. There's a lot of new people getting into the sport that's quite different from those of us, say, in the United States or Europe even, who maybe have been at this for a while. I know in the US, we've had 100 mile trail races since like 1975 about. So uh, we're looking at, you know, 45 years worth of the sport and here, I think five years ago even, there were hardly any races. So I think it's gonna be a pretty interesting look at what's going on here. And I am super excited to be participating myself. So you guys will get an inside look at, you know, what the races look like here. This is a 100K race. We are going to be about two hours south of Shanghai. Shanghai, if you don't know, is about, it's on the east coast of China, about halfway, I guess, up or down the coast and we're gonna be going to, heading down to Ninghai. So this is Friday morning. I flew in last night and the race itself is actually tomorrow morning. So it's a really quick trip, but it should be pretty action packed. I know there's gonna be about 20 Solomon athletes here in China. Really excited to meet them and we'll give you guys a little look inside what's going on here. Oh, my name is Johnny. I'm Jamil's friend in China. Thanks, guys. That's it. No well, um, um, I think this is the easiest race in the West 100 qualifier list. Uh, just a little bit harder than the Hong Kong 100. Good luck, Jamil. <laughs> uh, today we are going to go get a cab to the train station and take about uh, three hours to the small town called Ninghai. Um, this afternoon we will go to pick up all the race pa pack uh, and uh, Solomon China will have an event this afternoon and all the uh, Solomon people will have a great event and we will have an uh, elite athletes con uh, conference uh, then we are going to go get dinner and have a rest the scenery of the race is it's a lot of bam uh, bamboo forest and uh, the peak is not that high but a lot of creeks there are uh, about three of four higher peaks in the, uh, in, the, in the race courses and the, the rest part is just uh, flat you can just it's pretty runnable oh uh, yeah I'm gonna run this race and I run the first edition of this race the first uh, edition of the race I ran about uh, 26 hours I know that's pretty slow <laughs> I hope I run within 24 hours what about you Jamil me oh I don't know just want to finish but no, I thought I thought it was gonna be I guess maybe hours? easier. Yeah, I don't know. I, mean, I, I was thinking it had less climbing than it did, but it's got I think fifteen thousand feet of climb. That's pretty good. He's saying it's harder than Hong Kong hundred K. I think that took me eighteen or nineteen. No, it's it's too long for you. It's about sixteen <laughs> hours, I think. It. For uh, Hong Kong, well, I took I I slept for a while. Oh <laughs> no, you, uh, you think this one I'll run sixteen? Yeah, you can you, you can do it. Oh, if you don't sleep. Yeah, I won't sleep. Yeah, because in the hundred, you take a long time for sleep, so <laughs> you run about more than twenty hours. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, for this year, if you don't sleep, you can run within sixteen hours, probably. Cool. cool. It's Thanks. only five hundred meters climb. It's easy because you have, you finish the hard rock. It's <laughs> it's it's not a big deal for you. <laughs>
We just got off here at Minghai Station. That train ride was pretty interesting. There was so much development going on that it was pretty crazy. But it looks beautiful here. Uh, mountains and big city. And uh, here's uh, Johnny and my friend waiting for me. arrived here to pack it pick up and I think this might be also the maybe the finish line of the race I'm not 100% sure okay so this is the finish as well um, we just met up at the hotel with some of the S-man athletes and they are all part of Solomon and Sunto here in China and they look pretty dang fit and I'm pretty scared so uh, yeah <laughs> Uh, hi, I'm James. I'm, I'm working for MR Sports and uh, uh, work, working for Suntos uh, social media. Yeah, very exciting. Thank you. Thanks, man. So it's a very different. So the race started uh, six years ago. Yeah. And every year more and more people attend the race. Yeah. 1,200 people. Half for 100 kilometers. Yeah. Half, another half for uh, 50 kilometers. 50 kilometers. Yeah. 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 So it's a big party yeah. for children. So you're welcome. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you so much. Very excited yeah. to be back. <laughs> Alright, just went through the whole check-in process here. I've got my my bib number, bib number four for the race here, and uh, excited to go. Looks like a really great setup for this race once again. They put on a great show out in Lijiang, and it's looking to be pretty awesome out here. Looking forward to tomorrow. It's nice and nice and cool out. My name uh, I'm Fan Zhao. Yes, I'm the distributor of the ultra ultra wear footwear shoes. Yeah, I tr I tried to run maybe things a couple of years ago when I was in Utah, U.S. Okay. I, I lived there for two years. Yeah, so I I start to running from there. Yeah, so when I later and I came back to China and. Uh, I find I find the the, the Chin, Chinese uh, trail running community start to grow up. Yeah, there are a lot of new races like Ninghai Ibai. Yeah, it's about maybe four. It's fourth or fifth. Yeah, so it's the first time I run 100 kilometers race, ultra race. Yeah, I was living in Logan, Utah. Yes, in Wasatch Mountain. Yeah, I, I love there, yes, and some also not a thousand Utah, like Moab, yeah, I run a couple of races there. It's different in U.S., it's more like a community race, maybe most of the race is maybe 100 to 300 people, yes, and they don't have a big, how to say that, yeah, production or 
this kind of big thing. Yeah, because China, Chinese, uh, China has more people. Some some race is a bigger and more commercial sometimes. Yeah, it's a good thing I think. To have the community, small races also have this kind of bigger, more bigger races. Trail running still a uh, maybe the best and easiest way to explore the nature people in china it seems the uh, economy is still uh, growing fast and people have more time and more money to put their time in the in these sports for most of the chinese runner they still they are still from the big city like beijing shanghai or guangzhou most of the uh, beautiful place is still in maybe like a west, north, or southwest, most remote area in China. Yes, they have big snow mountain. They have the grasslands. Yes, I think the future in future couple of years, maybe the the growing races is in really in the most remote but very scenic area. The the, the race in Colorado or Utah, they are most runner is coming from surrounding area. It's hard to, like the New York people, they don't come to Utah to run certain uh, races. But here in China, in maybe in south, like the small town southwest, the, the local people don't run a lot there. And for most of the runners, they still come from like Shanghai or Beijing. It takes maybe a couple of hours to fly to there. Yes. So they attract people from big city. That means the the runner from the big city they have more time, yeah, and money. As the the sports grows and more and more people enjoy the this this events, enjoy the, the this sports. Yeah, I think the local people will attend more the local races. Kind of a nervous. It's yeah. It's a, my first like ultra race. Yes. And I hope it's going smooth. It's a high reputation race, and they have a good, like a big, very big community, good environment race. I just want to enjoy the like the southern east China. Yeah, I am living in Beijing, northern part. Yes, yeah, so I want to try to enjoy the the trail here. Yeah, in southern China. <laughs>
the night before the race already. Uh, crazy, I know, but um, I am just in my hotel room now after we had dinner, after uh, kind of the quick day. I am going to get my race kit ready and head off to bed as soon as I can so I can get one more good night, good night's sleep. Um, got my race bag here. See what's in the goodie kit here. We got a got a custom hat. It says "Be Your Own Hero." Oh yeah, here's our uh, drop bags. So they give us these um, pre-sized bags. You just slap your sticker right there. Huh? What is this? Got a little. Um, looks like a Solomon Ninghai. Is this a shoe bag? It's a zippered pouch. I don't know. I'm gonna say it's for your shoes. That's cool. It's like we got a little cup here. Just says Ultra Gear and UTNH. Um, anyways, pre-race thoughts. This race has a lot more climbing than I thought it was going to. It has, I think, over 5,200 meters, which is over 15,000 feet of climb. I'm rooming with the guy that got second place last year. He says it's definitely, well, he says it's easy, but um, it, he's hoping to finish in like 11, 11 and a half hours, somewhere in there. I'm just kind of winging this whole situation. I ran Tahoe five weeks ago. Pretty much just gonna enjoy this thing and not take anything for granted. Being fortunate that I'm out here and I'm not injured. I think we still have good weather. Last year it was really rainy, so that is something. Yeah, I don't know that I have too many other thoughts. Just kind of like do what I do, go out there, uh, have a good time, record some footage. Yeah, come away with a finish, that's the goal. For tomorrow. Got your nutrition? Did you get what you needed? Yes. Nice. Still have 40 minutes till the race start. Pretty lively scene out here. Good? Uh, not yet. Alright, I'm gonna go check out the starting line itself. We're basically at a school right now. <laughs>
we are just about two miles in to the 2018 Ultra Trail Ning Hai. And it's a beautiful, cool morning here. We're running through a small village. It's just daily life out here in China. I don't know what these bundles are, but we're gathering it up. There's a lot of little gardens and farms all over the place. And we're just cruising up these roads, feeling pretty good despite being about five weeks out from Tahoe 200. Just gonna take it easy and hopefully run strong throughout this thing and just uh, soak it all in. Definitely a unique experience for me. some trails here we're three miles in and all I have to say is thank God it's not stairs like Hong Kong they actually appreciate the trails here so we're going up this creek bed on a nice single track it's a little technical a little rocky Some bamboo forest now. Pretty rad. Yo, check in mile four. More bamboo forest. We're on a meandering climb here. Definitely taking my walking breaks. Too early to push it. We are just about five miles in here, still on this first climb. What I think is kind of funny about this race is just I think because of the language barrier, I couldn't really find the English section on the website where they have course map, elevation profile, checkpoint aid station information. So I'm literally flying blind today. I have no clue where or when our first aid station will be. Recently found out this race has over 5,000 meters of climb and I don't really have any idea where we're going. So I'm literally just like following everyone, following the markers and taking it as it comes. I think it's kind of a recipe for success, except don't ever do it. <laughs> Always know your courses, people. They've got the uh, wrong way markers and they use these, these red ribbons. This is their, uh, their ribbons right there. Well, we're hitting our first downhill. We're kind of heading into, really into the mountains here. This is really cool. Uh, speaking of, here's checkpoint one. Hey. Hey there. What do you think so far? Just uh, run.
legit race has a power line section and this one is no exception. So we're a little over 10 miles in. Just met this guy Hans up ahead. He's from the area. And we had a nice long road descent for a few miles. And now we're on this really steep cut. So far it's going well. Feeling pretty good, taking it super easy. Having a great time. bamboo for a good while and now we're climbing back up out of it. It's all bamboo up there. Too fast, huh? Yeah. Now slow it down now. I tend to finish this race before 12 a.m. p.m. Okay. So, no, only three hours past. But I'm and finish. we're a quarter way, a quarter of the yeah. way done. 15.6. Yeah. Well, you better slow it down, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, DNF. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no DNF. You heard it. A quarter of the way done with this thing. It's been really pleasant so far. So I don't know 100% uh, the history of these trails, but there's a guy walking up with some sort of a farming tool. It's pretty sweet, probably using some of these paths that they've been using for a long time, farming these hillsides. I'm guessing that's our next checkpoint.
3D. Okay. Hi there, how are you? <laughs> Get over how good these oranges are. Right, so 17.4 in three hours 20 minutes. Whatever this town is is freaking amazing. And look at that. All along here they're harvesting bamboo right now. So you see it's big piles and then you can see back there kind of hard to see. We've got all the bamboo stalks lined up on the road. I don't know all what they use bamboo for, but I know it can be used for like scaffolding, maybe building materials. A lot of subsistence living out here. They're working the land. Really cool to see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey! Love it, the whole village is out. Some of these buildings look very, very old. There's the bamboo I was talking about. I love how uh, some of these people are all about the chrome. Really, this has blown away my expectations so far. Of course, wildlife, we got some ducks down there. Bamboo must be their main industry here. Here totally reminds me of some of the canyon sections at Western States. It's really funny. This must be that like Grand Canyon section they're talking about because we are just diving into this thing. Oh yeah, nice. in six hours totally dunked myself in the uh, stream back there uh, I, so we're climbing out of this really big canyon and 
It's a really steep trail, just cut straight up on these rock steps, which is pretty sweet. Just about out of water, so we're hoping checkpoint is close, but we just don't know. I certainly have no clue. Just as I drain the last bit of my water, lo and behold, next checkpoint. Yeah, water. Uh, two waters? Yes, please. Okay, okay. Do you want any water? I just offered me a cigarette. You gotta partake in the locals. Okay. <laughs> that was really good. like some sort of a salted vegetable and it just really perked me up a bit. What's up chicken? All right, quick check in at mile 30.3. This race is much harder than I thought. Currently over 8,000 feet of climb. We are getting real close to seven hours. Running through all these villages is really, really cool. Not something that I expected as part of this race. I just hit mile 31 in seven hours. And we've got a big descent coming up here. I little check in here at 35 and a half miles, eight hours in almost. There's something talking to me. No idea. Um, not much to report, just kind of in that lull of an ultra. I'm making good time, but I'm kind of trying to bridge that gap to get from, you know, the enthusiasm of the start of the race to final push for the finish. Love this. They're during harvest season they're just taking over the roads, drying out their grains. feeling tired. Check out this ducky. Are you okay? Great. Okay. Come on. Thank you. Huh? Lisa. Lisa. 
Here at Mall 40, sipping on some rice soup, I guess. Just getting, um, got my drop bag here, so I'm getting resupplied. I've got my watch charging up and refilled with food. And I'm um, just taking a minute here. It's nice to sit down for a second after, um, you know, almost nine hours of getting after it. It's the aid station scene. He's been helping me out here. <laughs> it's okay. Climbing up near mile 43. Really feeling those Tahoe 200 legs. I heard uh, some noises up here, so I think the next checkpoint is just up ahead here. I'm 44 miles in and I'm tired. Ooh, guys, wish this video was more exciting. I'm basically in the home stretch section of the ultra if we were to talk anatomy of an ultra marathon here. I was in no man's land for a while. That's where uh, you're running miles, but it doesn't really make a difference. You're just kind of, you're almost spinning your wheels because the finish line's still really, really far away. And now, kind of over that hump, and uh, it's like with every mile, the uh, miles I've gone and the miles left are rapidly distancing themselves. But it will be dark in one hour, so we'll just have to see, but it probably won't be that interesting. I'm not making great time, I'm not losing positions, but I'm just marching on as we do. Now my hips are a bit sore. I definitely was running pretty strong earlier, so that probably is catching up with me a little bit, but you know, that's okay. These things are hard, and that's why we do them. stretch. Hey. Thank you. 
Is it tough? Yeah. Huh? It's very tough. Very tough. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> it's way tougher than I thought. Yeah. It's typical of his uh, Li Jiang. Yes. <laughs> yes, a guy. Very nice. Finishes there. Hey. Let's see. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks so much for the race. Thanks for the uh, invitation. Uh, okay. okay. So, congratulations. Yes. <laughs> You're tired, right? <laughs> you, you always use your camera, camera yeah. all the time. Has yeah. the battery. You might have battery. Put it on. I've dropped off back. Yeah. yeah. So, your, your size is a. Uh, medium. Medium? Oh, that was dope. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sweet. All right, guys. I just finished up here. 11:43 p.m. Uh, definitely pushed it hard in the last few miles. I felt good again. I kind of rolled my ankle. I think with about 10 to 12 miles to go, or maybe it was even more than that. Maybe it was 20. So I was really taking it easy. Lost a lot of time, but um, yeah, done. Check out this finisher's. Uh, Garment is that not the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen? That is, it's a vest and it's like straight from the 80s. Um, yeah, just getting some beer and an apple. There was like a big group of people, maybe um, the last aid station or so maybe eight or 10, and I was able to keep ahead of them, so definitely proud of that.